Do you want to learn how to calibrate the transmitting power of your PEC chip if you've already downloaded the Vector Greedfy configurator and connected your PEC chip via Ethernet to your PC, you're in the right place. Hi, my name is Yannick. In the past year, I've worked on the Vector Greenfire configurator and among others, I developed the power spectral density calibration feature for PEC chips, which I would like to introduce you to in this video. First, I would like to show you the spectral density of a PEC signal and explain the goal of PSD calibration to you. Then, I will explain how to capture the spectrum of a PEC signal and load it into the Greenfy configurator. And finally, I will show you the calibration feature itself and how to adjust the transmitting power of a PEC chip with it. In this picture, you can see the typical spectrum of an uncalibrated PEC signal. The x-axis represents the frequency, the y-axis shows the transmitting power in dBm. The spectrum is divided up in 1155 separate carriers or frequency bands on which the signal is modulated. Each carrier has its individual transmitting power. The notches in the spectrum are deactivated carriers on which the chip does not transmit the signal. In this example, you can see that the transmitting power of the different frequencies vary strongly. The goal of PC calibration is to get all the active carriers to send at a homogeneous transmitting power, which has a set target value. In this case, it's minus 35 dBm represented by the blue line. You can recognize the signal as calibrated because the transmitting power of all the active carriers roughly coincide with the blue line. On the deactivated frequencies, the noise flow can be seen. The further it is away from the target value, the better is the signal quality. So, in order to calibrate, we have to record the spectral density of the PC signal. Here are two possible setups. The first one is listening on traffic between two PLC nodes. Here, an EV node and EVC node are connected with a T adapter. The lower side of the adapter is connected to a spectrum analyzer via BNC. When listening to the traffic between the two nodes, be careful to isolate the messages of the node you want to calibrate. The second option is listening on beacon frames of an EVC node. The EVC node will periodically send beacon frames. When listening on the beacon frames, set the spectrum analyzer to max hold. A full spectrum of the transmitting power will show after a couple of minutes. The disadvantage of this method is that due to longer recording times, background noises and interferences will slightly distort the measurement. Here you can see an example of the second option. The control pilot and the protective earth are connected via BNC to the spectrum analyzer. Now we set up the spectrum analyzer. The spectral range on which the PLC chip sends reaches from 1.8 MHz to 27.9 MHz. When calibrating a QCA chip, there need to be 535 measurement points over the spectral range with a delta F of 48.8 kHz. In contrast, when calibrating a VertexCom chip, there need to be 1070 measurement points over the spectral range with a delta F of 24.4 kHz. Now that we have the correct settings, we can record the spectrum and export it as CSV file. The exported file should be formatted like this. The green file configurator starts reading the values after the label frequency and magnitude. As a decimal separator, a comma or a dot can be used. Separate the values with a semicolon from each other. After importing the measurement data into the green file configurator, we can now start creating a new configuration. The transmitting power consists of two parts. The first one is the prescaler value, which determines the individual transmitting power of a carrier according to the shown formula. The second one, the RFE gain, boosts or attenuates the entire signal on all frequencies by a set value. To get a good signal to noise ratio, keep the RFE gain as low as possible because background noise will be boosted by it as well. Now let's put the green file configurator to work to generate a modified configuration. First, we select a device to be calibrated. Then we read the current configuration from the selected device. Press Calibrate Device to open the calibration feature. Press PSD from File to import the measurement data. Then choose the device configuration. The configuration of the current device is selected by default. Check if the default target value of minus 35 dBm fits your calibration goal. Then press Show Chart to confirm your input. A new configuration can be generated automatically by pressing Calculate or manually with the Adjust option. Individual adjustments to the automatically generated configuration can be done as well under the Adjust option. The scroll bar sets the RFE gain for the new configuration.
In the field below, individual carriers of the new configuration can be boosted or attenuated. In case that the current device configuration just needs some slight modifications, you can load the current configuration into the new one and adjust it manually. For more even spectrum, use the smooth out option. When done with the changes, press save to file. The changes are now saved locally. When pressing right to device, the locally saved configuration is flashed to the PLC chip. When write to device is done, close the calibrator, read from device again, open the calibrator and the chart to check if changes were saved properly. Now you can redo the PSD measurement with the new configuration. If results are not satisfying, repeat the calibration process. The calibration process for the Vertexcom devices is the same, except for the recorded spectrum and more limited options regarding manual changes to the configuration. After loading the measured spectrum into the GreenFi configurator, the only available option is Calculate. Manual adjustments are not possible. So, that's how you perform the PSD calibration with the GreenFi configurator. For more detailed help, press F1 and have a look into the documentation. If there's still any open questions, don't hesitate to contact us. You can find a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. In case you didn't find this video helpful, maybe this other random vector tutorial is suitable for you. Please subscribe to our Tech Tutorial YouTube channel and hit the bell.